वेरी गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग श्री भगवत गीता सत्संग द सॉन्ग ऑफ द डिवाइन ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम ओम श्री गणेशाय नम ओम श्री सरस्वताय नम ओम श्री गुरु दत्तात्रे नम ओम श्री महालक्ष्मी नम गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम वी विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम चैप्टर टू वे वी स्टॉप यस्टरे दैट इज वी आर करेंटली डूइंग कर्म योग द योग ऑफ सेल्फलेस एक्शन विच इज द चैप्टर टू सांख योगा द योग ऑफ नॉलेज वी स्टॉप टिल वर्स फोर्टी नाइन सो जस्ट टू अ क्विक रिकैप अबाउट वॉट लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा टॉट यस्ट डे टू अर्जुना इन द पार्ट ऑफ सेल्फलेस एक्शन सो ह्योर ही इज टीचिंग अर्जुना टू हैव इक्वानिटी ऑफ माइंड एंड ही एक्चुअली रिवील्ड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सीक्रेट इन दिस ही सेट द इवननेस ऑफ माइंड इज कॉल्ड द योगा and he said when you seek refuge in the seek fix equi poise of the mind only then will you be able to do your actions that is your duties selflessly without focusing on end result and he also said some of the most important lesson for each one of us to understand and that is one he said you have only the right to work alone and not get attached to the fruits of the action that means you cannot get attached to what is going to be the end result if you get attached then he says it's a motivated action and the second most important lesson he gave do not consider yourself to be the cause of the fruit of action what does that mean that's a very important lesson for all of us to understand in our life if we want to you know live a god pleasing life which is to do our dharma and swadharma this line this teaching says that that i am not responsible i am not the cause the cause is because of me something happened because of me this mahabharat war is happening because of me my children are dead because of me somebody gets killed because of me the fight happened do not consider yourself to be the cause of the fruit of the action whatever is outcome that end result you are not the cause of the fruit of that action see doing alone is your job and that is why my krishna guru ji says we always have to have something called equanimity of mind you know why why that is so important is even i am actually learning through this that is because when you hear whether it is a favorable or unfavorable things in your life whether through people whether you read something you are not letting your mind get disturbed and that means you are not reacting to anything that is being said to you you know what happens is our mind gets tainted by what we hear what we see around simply because the mind doesn't have the understanding and the knowledge neither the knowledge because we have never learnt in our life and this is exactly what my krishna guru ji taught to me yesterday by giving a very beautiful example of one of the saints one of the great gurus it's about the himalayan master and in that swami rama is you know giving his recounts of how he has journeyed on the path of spirituality and the kind of challenges that you come about to overcoming your ego arrogance and the thing about i know all that so in that lesson he you know one of he meets one of the students he meets someone i'm sorry i don't know if it's a student or who it is but he meets somebody who is doing a very beautiful sadhana and he was very impressed to see that person evolved so highly in a spiritual state and then swami ramas who has taught you this and he gives the name of swami ramas guru so immediately swami rama gets very angry oh how come my guru has taught somebody else and not me and i am learning so much and i am so devoted to my guru and then he goes to his master and the moment he meets his master you know what the first thing the master asks him he says oh you still haven't overcome your shatripus you still in that mode of anger the anger is controlling you he asked what is that why are you angry what is causing you the disturbance so swami rama narrated what happened then he asked why haven't you taught me and that moment the guru recounts saying look first whatever i have taught you you have to practice practice is very important which means first you have to live 
the lessons that you have already been given the knowledge and understanding about and if you don't practice that how will you will move on to the next stage i cannot teach you if you're not practicing those lessons if you're not able to control yourself one very important word which lord shri krishna imparted to arjuna is you be self controlled it's very very important we fail to understand these words why because we are only hearing and please remember the spiritual knowledge is not for everybody only if you are very keen to evolving on the path of spirituality then you will take these words to be very serious otherwise you are just hearing it's not even for you so don't even bother about putting in any efforts or doing anything but if you are truly and spiritual aspirant then you will evolve you will want to understand you will want to learn you will want to go ahead in that journey and this is what i understood and that's a very very powerful lesson what the guru taught to swami rama he says it's like you know till you haven't practiced how can i give you another lesson because this lesson itself you have not been able to understand you're not been able to live so likewise please remember the guru the great master the divine being knows when to give you that right knowledge the knowledge which you are capable to understanding that is why my guru ji says you know he is taught even all scripture says it's called self realization that knowledge will reveal itself to you when you are ready for it not otherwise you can't have your heart covered with all the darkness that muck that ignorance you know with all our shadripus anger hatred avarice jealousy greed lust you name it malice towards everybody we are living in our own bitterness bitterness towards ourselves and the whole world everybody goes through this in their own way and we all live in that ignorance that you know entire darkness that is covering our beautiful heart and so the knowledge is not going to be revealed because you are already covered yourself with that so how can you experience love you can't so how can you have equanimity of mind you cannot so you are constantly in that friction in that mode of friction agitation you are not peaceful there is no peacefulness in your life that is what happens that is because we have to overcome this body so what is the most important lesson first for us to live here and that is called the equanimity of mind and please remember it also depends that you know how you react also can change the way things the end result of that action is going to be and that is why my krishna guru ji says always you know be your good self be your good self this is one teaching that he gives everybody everyone he teaches the same thing be your good self be kind be compassionate be loving caring forgiving and we have to first forgive ourselves only then can we forgive anybody else in the world you know if you are not forgiving yourself you you hold yourself responsibly for certain actions you hold yourself responsibility for certain things that happening but here the lord is very clearly saying do not consider yourself to be the cause of the fruit of the action and you know it's also very convenient that the world will blame you oh, because of you this happened because of this that happened please remember that action is anyway going to be programmed that is already programmed something is going to happen because destiny is programmed but how you respond and react to that that choice you have and if you are a good self then your reaction and response is going to be divine it's not going to be demonic today that is how we represent and please remember we are representing the divine when you have a guru one very important lesson you know that is that your action directly reflects him so the world is not going to call you bad please remember this the world is going to call your guru bad oh what kind of a guru do they have is this how the guru teaches is this how, what the guru is teaching them this is what the world starts telling so who is at the end of the day going to get blamed for our bad actions the our bad actions or however we react or what we say and how we speak please remember everything is directly reflected to the guru and that hurts me a lot many a time if i get angry even once that reflects very badly on my guru it's my guru is not bad he is a great lord almighty he is the perfect being that is there on this planet that he is this lord shri krishna who is teaching this arjunas of this world that don't do this be your good self have the equanimity of mind doesn't matter what the world says this is what my guruji will continuously say this but it's taken me a long time to understand what he is teaching because that no, the the perfection of that knowledge the firmness of that knowledge only fructifies at the right time 
and that also depends on the effort that you put in so it's about my sadhana my effort how much do i put in is when i will be able to evolve and the next path will open so knowledge cannot be opened up if you are not practicing it it's not about just hearing no it is not hearing or you are just not doing this satsang and i am not just you know doing this satsang and then i'm saying oh i'm some great no not at all i am learning equally i am also journeying through this see please understand spirituality is, spirituality doesn't mean overnight that you learn anything 12 years with my guruji means nothing it is it is about even if you go through 12 lifetimes you continue to learn because that is the ocean this is like a ocean athang sagar limitless ocean how deep you want to swim in that is completely depends on you and only when you show that progress can your gurudev move you to the next step and give you that right knowledge not until then the truth cannot be revealed to you so the so the knowledge comes to you at the right time when you're ready to understand that when you're ready to you know move on when you're ready to implement it not before or after many years ago when i first came into spirituality i would always tell my guruji guruji i want to learn everything you know fast forward fast forward fast forward is what i had asked <laughs> and it's very funny my guruji never even started my actual spiritual lessons until 2014 my guru found me in 2009 as a spiritual disciple as a disciple you know the guru finds you you don't find the guru at the right time and when he found me you know he just started he started the basics of bhagavad gita but i never understood anything from that i only understood at that moment in time whatever very very little it's like it's it's a, a tiny speck it's like a dot or like you no know, small dot just one dot tiny dot that is all i could even understand what it means very basics 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 it's like my guruji say my guruji will say it's like your bread and butter the basic food that you eat every day that is all i could understand why because i didn't have knowledge i was very ignorant being first you have to go through the purification process knowledge doesn't just come like that it's not a joke this is spiritual truth and first you have to become ready for it the foundation is first purification of your heart purification of your mind and surrender unto the lotus feet of the guru and when you have little bit of that surrender that is when he slowly slowly starts opening up this knowledge through the teachings and it also depends ex- exclusively on that individual because it is depends on the amount of sadhana that i do the practices see my guru ji can give all the fantastic knowledge but if we are not capable to practice like it has been prescribed please remember there are no shortcuts in this today people want you know relaxations they want they don't want to go to through the arduous effort they want concessions in everything and if the concession is not given they say oh i don't want to be in this why because you are in, you are you are incapable are you playing this truth which is the bhagavad gita the lord shri krishna himself has said anything wrong here what is he saying arjuna arjuna lift your bow and arrow and fight but who is not able to fight it's arjuna why because of his mind his attachment to the body senses and everything so here lord shri krishna is imparting this most esoteric knowledge to arjuna so likewise please understand this knowledge can only seep in when you become that recipient you have to become that sponge who can absorb the water and completely you know immerse in that so only the true spiritual seeker can get this knowledge you know thousands of people can hear this knowledge they can hear i'm saying the word here i'm not even saying listening because listening is not happening by anybody the listening is a very powerful word to listen it's not to hear listen is you you put your heart soul your focus everything in listening every single word and internalizing it today we only hear so that listening should happen and only when you listen and when you truly truly seek this knowledge then it opens up your guru your great master will open up for you at the perfect timing so likewise in my own case my nol he didn't start me te- start teaching me the real spiritual knowledge until 2014 and since then as i've progressed whenever my guru ji thinks that something he has to teach me some important knowledge that he has to give me he on his own will give me i don't have to ask the only thing is i have to continue to evolve on the path i am going to make mistakes mistakes in the sense you have to learn sometimes you're going to fall and learn sometimes you're going to learn through tough experiences the lessons are going to come dime a dozen till the perf- that firmness of knowledge is not happening within you that lessons keep coming 
time and again until you don't perfect that lesson and till that such time you continue to learn only in that level like my guruji said i can't if you are failing 8th and 9th i can't put you promote you to 10th so you have to clear 8th and 9th that is the law you know even in education system you can't go and directly write 10th without clearing your 8th standard and 9th standard then which means if you go do that way you you are failed your 8th standard and 9th standard and you are going to give your 10th standard exam then what kind of a student will you be you will be a very below mediocre which means your knowledge is so flimsy and whatever you learn and then go out in the world to do you will never be successful likewise the spiritual knowledge is also like that so we have to evolve you know we have to give our tests we have to evolve we have to live this words this is not just mere doing satsang for the heck of doing satsang no not at all please remember these are all very profound truth which will help an individual and that is why lord shri krishna in this book in in bhagavad gita he is mentioned this knowledge is not for everybody it is only to those spiritual seekers or those true spiritual aspirants who really want to evolve in this so you might hear the satsang so you might listen to it but if this is not meant for you you will never be able to get that understanding please remember so it is a choice that you have whether you want to evolve in spiritual or not that's perfectly you know that's perfectly your own choice nobody decides for another person please remember like my krishna guruji he will always give us a choice what do you want do you want my maya or do you want to be with the lord being with me means you have to go through our doers effort you have to work really hard you have to do a lot of sadhana you have to follow the dictates the the you know the whatever is taught the discipline taught by lord shri krishna had to be has to be adhered you cannot have this you know flimsy way of saying i need concessions in life there are no concessions this is the perfect teaching of lord shri krishna and today everybody in the world wants concessions so we follow a system in krishna ashram my guruji says if you have to wake up at the certain time you must wake up if you have to be here on the breakfast table at a certain time it, you have to be there you can't be late you know that's something we all have to practice no you're not going to attain that overnight but you will have to practice you know why that is about disciplining yourself when you self discipline then only you can become successful in whatever you do it's not going to come so easily right that is called sadhana so what is the spiritual sadhana means you're practicing that living your disciplined life living a god pleasing life or eating certain way you know that is called the way of life which is what my krishna guruji is going to be teaching now the way of life you know what is happening today if you look at today's youngsters they're getting lost in this social media they're being addicted to that you take this reels you know who oh, you just start browsing i saw a small girl small young child completely immersed in that and it's an addiction they just start enjoying you know they climb they, they scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and they just get lost in that so what is happening to your brain your mind is just fixated into it you're not expanding yourself to do something better you're not expanding your mind to learn so whose problem is it is it the problem of social media or is it a problem of how you have to discipline living your life my guru ji gave me this very beautiful understanding he says you know when you are learning about something on youtube you know i'm learning a subject so what happens is i watch that one video and then the moment i finish watching that video the youtube you know throws some more you can you know you can watch this you can watch this it gives you some options right and then the moment you click on the next which is which might not be relevant to the subject i'm studying then what happens is that i end up watching that then i go digress off so today that's a distraction that is becoming indiscipline with yourself so why am i going into something that i shouldn't so what is happening the focus of the mind is lost why because i am not self disciplined is it a problem with the youtube or the way the media has been built not at all they are perfect in their place but it is my problem you know that i am not disciplining myself i have to stick to my subject so if i'm watching about say i'm learning about um artificial intelligence what are the what is you know deep learning machine learning i'm learning so i have to only stick to that subject to go on to learn what is happening what is going on but the moment it recommends oh it's a beautiful place in switzerland let's go and visit this you know the alps so have i digressed 
from the subject itself of course and that is what today's mind do and whose problem is this is it a problem with the social media of course not it is the problem with you becoming indisciplined why because you are not able to control your mind that is exactly what he's teaching here you be self controlled arjuna that is what lord shri krishna is repeating you be self controlled don't expect anything from the world the world is created that is my creation this is how the world is meant to be this is kali yuga it's program towards you know pushing everything towards destruction so if you are not self controlled if you are not self disciplined why are you blaming the world for it they are perfect in their places you transform you rise above you have the opportunity to be this divine lord why not become that divine being that is what spirituality teaches us so then the understanding i really got is that i shouldn't expect from others that which i am learning from my master and my master has been repeating this i am not giving this knowledge to them i am giving it to you which i never understood so why am i having expectation from others that they have to live this spiritual lessons or they have to be perfect like this you know what lord shri krishna is asking us to be i cannot and that is when i it, it hit me really hard who am i expecting from and why should i expect from them so when my guruji says i just need only handful of students that is all i care about those who really want to evolve i will impart this knowledge to them now i understand what he is talking about but to get this understanding it has taken me many years i didn't understand i don't understand his words even today many things that he says why because it's is it his problem or my problem it's my problem because i am maybe i am not i don't understand the way it has to be understood but when i got the direct experience of what his word meant then it was a perfect acceptance so what happens you accept internally then you are not going to fight you are not going to be agitated you are not going to fight with the world you are not going to say anything bad to them because you know that is how they are meant to be then you accept it and it's a choice so my krishna guru ji said those true spiritual seekers will come but there will only be a handful of them it is not for everybody so what is my guru ji teaching as the way of life what he is teaching is the right knowledge how do you have the right the life skills in the world that is required about what is, how do you do your finances why you should discipline yourself giving you the right understanding about you know the the world around you putting you on the path of whatever your aspirations are so it's the right knowledge right tools and right direction so it's not about spiritual but the foundation is that the substratum is that which is my guruji is teaching you know how to do your swa dharma following the path of dharma that is what he is teaching so spiritual means you he is just putting you on the path the very 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 powerful lesson in from guru charitra i today it is it, it really like lord datatre just reminded me of that very powerful lesson that he is taught in that i have not understood he says narsim saraswati you know the avatar of lord datatre in that he is saying you know the too many people coming with their wants desires they coming there to get their grievances sorted out they are coming there to you know get their afflictions of this world to you know cure whether it is health whatever that they have their they, you know their problems in life they only come with that aspect they come with that want but he says there are very few people who come asking for that spiritual knowledge that is the truth even sai baba said in his poti that nobody i'm here i'm waiting to give that knowledge of brahma jnana but there is nobody to come and ask me for that but everybody comes with only the desires that i have i want this i want that i want marriage i want job i want children i want money you know cure me of my health this disease is bothering me that disease is bothering me that is what they come for but there are only handful of people you know who come really to see that spiritual truth so that they can redeem themselves and redeem the people in their world they can redeem themselves from the in the from the rebirth the from the cycle of birth and death so nobody else is interested so everybody else is going to live in that world of that is called which is the material worldly existence but the only thing which this great masters do is they establish everyone whoever is coming to them they put them on the path of they put them on the path of righteousness so that they don't do unrighteous actions they teach them how to do everything in the most righteous manner that is what they impart so here when you understand this truth that 
that you are not the cause of the fruit of the action so don't get swayed about the end result when you firmly establish this understanding you are going to become silent then you are not going to speak you are not going to say things because you know one of the most important thing that we need to understand the mind is very flim flimsy these are all the impressionable minds they are only understanding by what they see what they hear through this and everything is driven by senses and one of the powerful lessons which lord shri krishna is giving here is when the sense come in contact with the sense object you should not react but that is never going to happen because there is no self control at all you are going by what your mind is giving you but where are you listening to the divine lord even if the lord tells you don't do this you will actually do it more that is the way your mind is behaving you know mind is like a wild animal it's like a wild horse it's uncontrollable but if you want to progress and actually be a good human being it is a choice that you have whether you want to be disciplined whether you want to be self controlled or you know however you want to be the choice is in your hand lord shri krishna is not forcing arjuna but you know arjuna is very dear to lord shri krishna that is why he says i want my arjuna to understand and fight his battle do his swa dharma following the path of dharma that is what he is that is why he is imparting this knowledge to arjuna and if you believe you are that arjuna you have a choice to rise above so coming back so please remember the lord is revealing a very powerful secret this evenness of mind you know is called yoga and where is the lord existing he says established in the eternal existence and what does it mean to be in the yoga is to be in oneness with lord shri krishna that is where you can find him not otherwise it's not so easy to attain lord shri krishna lord shri krishna is beyond the mind the body the senses the ego the arrogance the three gunas and maya too but to go there first you have to evolve this path and till you don't evolve that path you can't attain him you can say i'm devoted you can say whatever you want it's not going to happen because this is to attaining him is not such an easy thing even like my krishna guru ji will teach you know i just put people on the path which is that they have to just do their duties yeah you can be devoted to me guru or you can be devoted to any god that you want it doesn't matter the ultimate is this is where you can attain him that oneness that yoga is what is the highest that is exactly what he is saying but to get to that how will you get to that first you need to understand how you live how do you do your actions selfless action is very important and equanimity of mind have the deep poise Re take refuge in the deep poise of mind and until you don't do that you can never ever get over this agitation of your mind the mind is going to be a yo yo this is a very important lesson today if you look at we are all facing a lot of mental health issues and this is because we don't have self control we are not self disciplined do you now understand why my guru ji teaches the way of life why he is imparting this most important lessons and not the, in the spiritual context he is making it very simple for the simple minds to understand because the problem is the mind can interpret the same knowledge it can misconstrue and go and tell some other person about that same knowledge in an incorrect manner so what is happening one blind person is telling the other blind person he is showing him the way then what happens that's very dangerous you know that is why it is said you know these these sayings are not just meant there they have a profound truth having no you know half knowledge is dangerous than having no knowledge it's better to not have the knowledge rather than having an half baked knowledge and that is very detrimental not just for you for people around as well so you should never say things that you don't know about which you have not experienced and that is why this truth till you don't experience what being in equanimity or what is that equanimity of mind mean you can't tell another person how to attain this have you first yourself attained no my guru ji says first i have to live this knowledge i have to become the knowledge myself till i don't get an experience about what is equi poise of mind or what is equanimity of mind how can i tell another person and i can't just go tell everybody who can who, who doesn't even fall in that category going through a spiritual journey is not a joke and getting you know very important see today there are a lot of gurus in the world everybody has a different purpose their purpose is perfect in their place so people assume what they have learned that is how it is see remember the guru only initiates a very few people and that initiation also varies 
and everybody has a specified duty in their life they are only they are only serving that much of a purpose it's like a jigsaw puzzle and every you know block only can fit in that much you can't fit the entire block so do you can't even compare yourself with somebody else and if you have no knowledge and you have no right to talk and compare because you're not only destroying your understanding you're destroying somebody else's understanding too so refrain from doing these things so coming back so do seek refuge in this equipoise of mind please remember this is a very 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 important lesson try to do this and you will be a very beautiful human being it's more important is you have to find that god within yourself there is no god outside of you for only first when you experience the divinity within you can you then see god in this entire creation this entire universe then you will overcome everything all the shadripus like anger greed lust desires hatred malice all that and until that time you're going to keep suffering and that is the part of life there's no choice because you are not able to have your self discipline nor are you are able to control yourself so we'll continue from verse 50 now endowed with equanimity one sheds in this life both good and evil therefore strive for the practice of this yoga of equanimity skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga oh my god exactly what i've been talking so long what i've been explaining he's saying what is the lord saying he's saying to arjuna endowed with equanimity see this equanimity is the most difficult thing to attain it's very easy to keep swaying oh something is good something is bad something is evil what is he saying endowed with equanimity one sheds in this life both good and evil what happens we we shed both good and evil we call some things as bad we call some things as good and that judgment is made by our mind because we're swaying between the pairs of opposites by what we see but when you understand everything is perfect in its place that is how this world has been made that is the that is the world of maya and the day you accept that then you're not going to see good and bad good and evil you just know that every human being every creature has both what what do they have the divine endowments and they have demonic endowments demonic that is evil dispositions and divine qualities too so what is that you want to be there it is a choice that you have so where is the question of good and evil at all because both the god and demon is within this body itself which is what you will be learning now in devi mahatmya and it's very beautifully explained there that is the lesson we have to understand and when you imbibe this truth then you are not going to judge anybody you are not going to use your yardstick to judge another person and you know what happens there is a very beautiful story in one of the scriptures and in that it is said that when we are in the presence of the guru you know when we are working with the guru we bring we have our own tendencies we have own our shortcomings and we attribute that to the master but that is our shortcomings and we think our master is like that how stupid is that have you ever understood when we behave see when we come in front of the guru we say we become naked which means what does that mean not physically naked i'm clarifying here because uh, you know the human mind can again say oh she said naked what does that mean it's not physically naked naked means your in inherent tendencies inherent nature it just comes in front of the master you might in the world might have behaved very nicely but when you come in front of the presence of the divine master everything that is you know within you he pulls it out that tendency is come forth and then what happens you wonder is this the person i am many a time i never knew i had these things in me that's hidden because it's suppressed it is hidden but the moment you come in front of this divine master it comes out whether it is anger whether it is your way of behaving whatever that tendencies that you have gathered over many lives of yours so that is what comes about and what does the guru do he purifies that he tries to you know teach you to curb the tendencies and that is again what what is this required self control self discipline how do you overcome that how do you control and curb that that comes with practice of equanimity endowed with equanimity one sheds in this life both good and evil but first you need to understand this so we reflect on our master we call we think our guru has those tendencies this guru has he is a perfect being he is a parabrahman guru sakshat parabrahma 
is standing in front of you and we are attributing things, how petty we are, how low-lying we are. It's very sad that we don't understand what is our shortcomings. It is not the guru who is at fault, it's we who are at fault. It is not the guru who has to learn, it is we who have to learn. So when the knowledge is coming, please remember it is not for somebody else, it is for you that knowledge is coming. It's about you who have to learn, it is I who have to learn. It's we have to learn that knowledge. If, that, if you are hearing even a little bit, that knowledge is coming to you. Otherwise, you will not be even sitting and getting that knowledge at all. You will not even be in this place. You will not even hear. The fact that the knowledge is coming means maybe you have to get that little bit of understanding. Otherwise, you will never ever hear this. This is the truth about spirit. This is the spiritual truth. And this knowledge, again, I'm saying today, with absolute conviction is not for everybody in the world. Only the true spiritual seekers will get this knowledge. That is the firm conviction that I have had. So coming back, practice this. And this practice will only be achieved with sadhana. And till you don't make that effort, you can't attain this. But having this perfect equanimity of mind, you will do good to yourself, let me tell you. Because I have suffered this pairs of opposite continuously. Why? Because we are looking at somebody, we are looking at that object, that sense object. And we are already saying, oh, that's hot, that is cold, that is, that is you know, that's, that's sweet, that is sour, that is ugly, beautiful. You know, these are the things that we are talking about it. But we, if we are not even, it shouldn't even matter to you. Like my Guruji, he might be eating the most tastiest food. It doesn't affect him. You know why? Because for him, there is, there's a, you know, we have five sheets. And in his case, there is no, he only has that external body, which is the physical body, the food body is all he has. Internally, that all other sheets doesn't exist for him. And there is so there is no contact. When the senses come in contact with the sense object, there's no reaction happening. But in our case, there are too much of reaction. But who's letting that reaction happen? It is your you yourself. So what is that you need to refrain from doing? That stop that reaction. Stop how you react by practicing equanimity of mind. Endowment with equanimity, one sheds in this life both good and evil. Therefore, strive for the practice of this yoga of equanimity. Practice, what is the Lord saying? Strive. Strive means you have to strive hard. You have to put in a lot of efforts for the practice of this yoga of equanimity. Skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga. Oh my God. You know what? I think we can't even go beyond this verse now. Till you don't achieve this, how can you even go ahead? Imagine, ask this question yourself. How can you go ahead? We are always stuck in chapter 2. I'm not joking. Um, I was doing uh, Nyaneshwari. In Nyaneshwari, you know, every day, I had, maximum I would do is one verse. And I have not gone beyond chapter 2 in that. I think in one of the verses, I, I don't know what the verse number is. I've just stopped. When I was in Singapore, I was doing this verse with my Guruji. And after that, I have not moved ahead at all. I don't know whatever the reason, but I told my Guruji, Krishna Ma, I'm still here. I don't know, means that there is something. Because see, Lord Sri Krishna's lessons are not like that. If you are not progressing from there, you are stuck in there. Till the time you don't practice. He's very clear here, you know. Therefore, strive for the practice of this yoga of equanimity. Skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga. Skill in action. What is he saying? It's a very profound truth. Skill. Skill in action. How you perform your action is a skill. That skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga. So when you practice this yoga of equanimity, you will become very good in the way you do your duties. When the, in the way you do your karma, the, the action, which is what is called selfless action. But you think this verse is such an easy thing? Absolutely not. And it is, it is just hitting me day by day. You know, the most important lesson which my Guruji gave last evening as well. It is about practice. It is about sadhana. And that choice is only you. You can make. Whether you really want to be in spiritual, whether you really want to put in so much effort, whether you really, really want to experience this lesson, that choice only you have. Nobody can do this for you. See, please remember, the Guru can only take the horse to the river, you know, to the water and say, now drink the water. But drinking the water, the horse has to do. Likewise, the Guru, 
the guru can only teach the disciple this is how you have to do this is what it means he can explain to you he can give you the understanding saying this is how it is you can get some experiences but till the time you don't put self effort to practice practices sadhana till you don't do your sadhana in practicing this lesson until then you cannot attain this yoga please remember there is there's no way you can achieve this so you're not even going anywhere in spirituality please remember and just saying oh i am in spiritual has no value and that is a decision only you can make there is nobody from outside who can make this for you i have to make this decision like my krishna guruji many many a time will tell if you can't handle no please get out i have not invited you in if you want to learn and be in spiritual you have to do this he'll say rakshi ma this is not a joke if you want to be in spiritual and you have to understand this knowledge you have to practice rakshi ma this is what my guruji teaches me and that's a choice i make and this is a choice and decision not given by made by the guru it is by the disciple whether to live this words or not whether to practice or not whether to become self disciplined or not because you have to put self effort what is called here is self effort lord shri krishna doesn't say arjuna it's okay i will lift the bow and arrow and shoot no why don't you don't shoot that is not what lord shri krishna is saying he is saying to arjuna you please wake up you please buck up right now and lift the bow and arrow and shoot fight the war born of your kshatriya dharma born of your swa dharma you are born to do that job don't say i am not going to do don't compare yourself with other person you have you are in that perfect place we always try to compare ourselves oh i wish i would be that i wish i would this please remember you are not born with that see you are born with a destination which is already fixed your destiny is predefined so what are you trying to say oh you think just because you are here that is why you didn't get something remember one thing your destination was that that is why you are here otherwise why would you be an arjuna ask that yourself no you think by not doing you're going to get something else of course not and he's going to give a very powerful lesson at the end of end of this chap you know the scripture i don't want to say it right now let us go slowly slowly and this is a very beautiful journey that we are evolving actually it's it's lovely i'm very glad you've given me an opportunity to learn this profound truth along with you so please remember it is your self effort nobody can give you that from outside lord shri krishna has not told arjuna i will you know i will do it for you don't worry arjuna you just sit and relax let me fight the war for you never ever is going to lord shri krishna say that he always will give a choice please remember the lord always gives a choice like he gave a choice to duryodhana and arjuna you know he gave choice to duryodhana when they came to ask you know that they they came and asked to the lord right i want the both of them wanted the lord so lord said i am not going to fight this battle duryodhana do you want me or do you want my you know my the team right all my weapons the entire soldiers who do you want my entire army so duryodhana made a choice he said i want your army but arjuna made a choice saying i want not shri krishna that is the choice you have if you have taken the decision then stick by that and again you can even go away in the midway that is a choice that you can make see the lord has the lord doesn't leave anybody please remember in this case also the lord cannot leave arjuna at his mercy but he is going to tell him what he has to do and be, because that is the part of his way is you know his world he is going to teach but the choice to do or not rests with that arjuna but when the lord is giving you the opportunity and you deny please remember in the future whether you like it or not you are going to still do the same action but which is going to incur karma that is what happens so don't use your mind practice this therefore strive for that practice of this yoga of equanimity skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga skill in action is a very 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 powerful word and that's not easily understood every word here is the supreme truth this is who lord shri krishna is he is all of this and beyond as well we don't even you know we are not even a tiny dot of him forget about saying i'm a devotee of lord shri krishna what devotee to be a devotee first qualified devotee doesn't mean just saying yeah you can take the divine name of the lord my guruji says that is why you know in this in the kali yuga the only simplest thing to do is the bhakti mark 
Bhakti is because you just express your devotion because you are not capable of this. This requires tremendous willpower, the power within yourself that I will do it, I will achieve that self-discipline and that self-effort is required. Nobody can give you from outside and it is not meant for weak heartedness. People with weak hearted and emotional, you can't get into this. You need a strong willed person to be this Arjuna. You have to put in your effort and that effort is there. And please remember all this that I spoke about, the capabilities, the God given capabilities there in everybody. Again, do you really want to do it or not? The choice rests with you alone. I'm emphasizing on the choice aspect. Please remember the choice is in your hand. Like Duryodhana took Lord Shri Krishna's army. But Arjuna said, I want you with me. Is army greater or Lord Shri Krishna greater? Lord Shri Krishna is the greatest because he is worth beyond that army as well. He, his one divinity with you, the grace, everything is with you. That path of dharma is with you. Please remember, that is a choice you have to make. Whether you are going to fall prey to the mind or, you know, give, empower that God within you and say, I will do it. And that is the self-effort which you have to put. So, Therefore, strive for the practice of this yoga of equanimity, skill in action lies in the practice of this yoga. Attain, strive to attain this yoga through self-discipline, self-effort and your sadhana alone. So with that, we stop. We have done verse 50. We will stop here and continue next week from verse 51. Thank you once again for joining Sri Bhagavad Gita Satsang. You all have a very good weekend. Om Shri Mahaganapate Namaha, Om Shri Gurudev Datta, Om Shri Sachidananda Sadguru Sainath Maharaj Ki Jai, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Digambara Digambara Shri Padvallava Digambara, Om Shri Krishna Guru Nath Nath Shri Guru Ve Namaha, Om Devi Durgai Namaha, Om Shri Krishna Arpanam Namastu, Krishna Mande Jagat Guru.